You're watching Building the Franchise with the New England Patriots, only on the NBL Network. What's going on, guys? Welcome back for episode number 12 of Building the Franchise with the New England Patriots. At the beginning of this episode here, we're going to take on the Indianapolis Colts, who are coming in at 6-5. and five. We're entering this week at 5-6 and six after a four-game losing streak. We're also two games behind the Bills for the division, and we're tied for the Jets for the second place in the division. After a four-game losing streak coming into this week and the Bills having success, continued success throughout this season, every game so, um, for the remainder of this year feels like it's do or die. It feels like we have to win the rest of the way out to even have a shot at making the playoffs and winning the division. Luckily, we are in New England where the Patriots do seem to have a little bit better luck than they do on the road. So without further ado, let's head out to Foxborough for this Week 13 matchup. Week 13 with a great Thursday night matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the New England Patriots. Back in Weeks 11 and 12 against the Bengals and Lions, Alex Collins got the start at running back after Adrian Peterson and LeGarrette Blunt were unable to really get anything going throughout the beginning of the season. So Collins got the start, and once again this game he got the start. He seems to be a little more explosive than both of the other guys, but at the same time, he, he's not really as strong, he's not as experienced in the league, so he's not as good at breaking tackles and being elusive. But despite the inexperience, he did finish the game against the Colts here in Week 13 at, with a 3.4 yard per carry average with one touchdown and one fumble right here where he tried to jump over the pile and the ball was knocked loose. Again, that comes from inexperience and hopefully he'll be able to gain that in the coming weeks. The offensive and defensive lines both in this game had a good game. The defensive line forced four sacks against Andrew Luck, while the offensive line did not give up any for Doe Ring, which allowed for Doe Ring to throw for 264 yards and two touchdowns. He did throw two interceptions in this game, but they weren't from being hurried. They were more from poor decision making on his part, and the Patriots hold on to win 21-16 against the Colts. Despite the win in Week 13 against the Colts, the biggest issue that the Patriots have faced all season long and even at the end of last season has been the inability of the quarterback to make the proper reads, the proper decisions, to get their team, to get our team into some sort of rhythm throughout the season, some sort of rhythm throughout each and every game. And it's just been inconsistent quarterback play has really been the killer of the Patriots. And as you see right here, you're just looking at a couple clips from the Week 14 game against the Vikings. We lost 7-12 to against them, and honestly, it should have been a blowout. Luckily, our defense kept us in this one a little bit, and we did have a chance at the end of the game to try to make a play for the win, but unfortunately, we were unable to do that. But with Nick Doring throwing five interceptions in the game against the Vikings, he was benched for the Week 15 matchup against the Chargers for Garoppolo, and Garoppolo, just as well as Doring, was unable to get anything done. He was unable to get a rhythm going unable to get the offense going downfield and we lost to the Chargers 10 to 27. So with only two weeks left in the season and a three game lead by the Buffalo Bills for the division, we are officially not going to make playoffs for the third season in a row. And with that, head coach Hedrick has announced to the team and to media that there will be a new quarterbacks coach next season who will also double as an assistant offensive coordinator. And that'll be announced toward the end of this episode as we head into the offseason information. But first, let's head over for the Week 16 matchup against the Houston Texans. We should have a good one on tap here today. It's the Patriots coming in at 6-8, and eight, going up against the Texans, who come in at 9-5. and five. The Houston Texans come into this game already guaranteed a playoff spot. Connor Cook, their starting quarterback, gets injured in the uh, first half of this game, which is unfortunate for them because he's been their leader for a while now. And, I mean... We weren't trying to hurt their quarterback and hurt them in that way as far as playoff goes. Of course, we were trying for the win to try to hurt their seeding. We're always trying for the win no matter who we're playing against. And it's, it's really just unfortunate that Connor Cook gets hurt in this game. He's a big player on the Texans team. On the Patriots side of the ball, we do have uh, Doe Ring starting the game. He throws an interception on the first drive and is benched immediately for Garoppolo. Garoppolo comes in and throws three more interceptions as the quarterback struggles continue for the Patriots. The biggest player on both sides of the ball was going to be Lamar Miller, though. He did have 85 yards and one touchdown. It was really more of a defensive effort by the Texans and, or lack of offense by the Patriots that helped the Texans hold on to this win 27-3 against us in Week 16. 
For our Week 17 matchup, the last game of the season, we're taking on the New York Jets. This is a game that we thought was going to be the game to win the division when we first looked at the schedule at the beginning of the year. But now with no playoff hopes, that is not the, the case coming into this game. This one might go right out the window because snow is falling and it doesn't appear to be letting up anytime soon. If you'll remember from our Week 7 matchup against the Jets in New York, our defense held the Jets to pretty much nothing. Um, they held the rushing yards to one yard. They uh, sacked Woodson eight times. Jabal Sheard had three sacks. Bullard had three sacks. Adrian Peterson even got going with 88 yards and a touchdown. But in this snowy, crappy weather game, it was a little bit of a different story. Garoppolo did get the start in this game, and he comes in, he throws for 181 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception, which is much better than he had been playing. Nowhere near the level that he both has the ability to get to and what the team is expecting of a starting quarterback in New England. But the defense did continue to give Woodson a little bit of a, a little bit of trouble. Um, it wasn't as much as last time. They only got one sack, but they did force three interceptions against the young quarterback. And the Jets halfback Lockhart on the play you just watched, he ended up getting an 80-yard touchdown. He finished the game with 111 yards and two touchdowns with that long, of course, being the 80-yarder. And our rookie tight end, Stanley Corliss, he ended up finishing the game leading receptions with eight. He had 71 yards and a touchdown in the final game of his rookie season. He had a good season this year and is somebody that we're looking forward to using a lot more next year. Especially due to the injury at the beginning of this year, he wasn't able to get as much production as we think he's able to. And the Jets do end up holding on to win this game 27-17 in the final game of the season. So we do finish the season with a 6-10 record, which is two games worse than uh, two losses worse than the last two seasons in a row where we ended 8-8. Eight and eight. And as you remember, it, this is head coach Hedrick's first season as an, uh, the Patriots coach. And he comes in immediately following the Week 17 loss against the Jets and announces that the quarterback coach Johnson has been fired and the replacement starting for next season is going to be none other than Patriots ex-quarterback Tom Brady. And as I mentioned before, he is going to be the quarterback coach, but he's also going to double as an assistant offensive coordinator. And the first thing that Tom Brady done was immediately following the game. As soon as the players were done changing, he called the quarterbacks into the room and gave them this speech. Every man in this room is counting on you. And every player that's ever worn this helmet is counting on you. And this place is special to me. It's special to the guys that I played with. It's special to the guys that played before me. I didn't have an easy experience. I didn't come in with the opportunity to play right away. I had to earn it. And you know what the greatest honor I've ever received as a player is? I was named team captain. That to this day is the single greatest achievement I've ever had. Because the men in this room chose me to lead their team. And these were my best friends. These were the guys that that knew that I liked to work, that knew that I loved football, that knew that I loved to play. But where did I learn to love for the game? Where did I learn to practice? Where did I learn to compete? It was sitting in the same chairs that you guys are sitting in today. So Tom Brady comes in and the first thing that he does is tries to rally the troops, tries to get the confidence up of both the young quarterbacks, Garoppolo and Doring. There was also rumors before the offseason began that he met with the coach, with Coach Hedrick and let him know that he would like Hedrick to try to bring in a veteran quarterback during the offseason to try to be a leader for these two young quarterbacks. Of course, Brady himself is not in any kind of position to make demands or anything like that, so it was simply Tom Brady to Coach Hedrick just saying, hey, this is something that I would like to try, um, you know, maybe give it a shot, tell me what you think kind of thing. Moving on to our offseason this year, there were a lot of pe a lot of changes made this offseason. There were reports about midseason that Hedrick had notes. He was taking notes on every single player and evaluating who was going to be on the team next season. And it uh, it turns out that Deron Harmon, the strong safety, Steven Gostowski at the kicker, the two biggest names that their contracts ended, and Hedrick did decided not to re-sign them. He let them walk. While young wide receiver Kenny Bell was signed to a contract extension following his um, season as a backup wide receiver on the Patriots. The biggest changes were made, however, during the free agency period where tight end Rob Gronkowski, running back LeGarrette Blunt, and running back Adrian Peterson, along with recently re signed quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo and multiple other players, were all released during the uh, free agency period. 
Hedrick also brought in veteran quarterback Tony Romo, seemingly wanting to try out the method that Tom Brady had for the team. And he also brought in running back Demarcus McKnight, who was on the practice squad on another team last year. And he liked what he's seen from the film that he's seen on the guy. And he brought him in for a workout and decided to um, sign him to a deal. A deal was also made with the Minnesota Vikings to send the 10th overall pick to the Vikings in return for the, a second round pick and a third round pick this season as well as a first round pick next season from the Vikings. In the draft, the Patriots, we decided to pick up free safety Vaughn Duncan in the second round, strong safety Andre Pickens in the second round, QB Turner Tennant in the third round, wide receiver Cedric Grigsby in the sixth round, and defensive tackle Devin Langley in the seventh round. None of these players seem to be starting caliber just yet. Um, the preseason will really determine what we're going to do with those players, whether they go onto the practice squad, get cut from the team, or earn a starting role on the Patriots roster. That's going to do it for episode number 12. Make sure you guys tune in for episode number 13 as we go through the preseason and begin NBL season number 22. And congratulations to Bomber and the Detroit Lions for the win in the Super Bowl over the Steelers, stopping the 3 -peat.